Shall we have a word of prayer? Our Father, we thank you very much for another opportunity you have given to us to be at your feet, to listen to your word. We pray that you back your word with power to be a blessing to our viewers and hearers in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless everyone, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now we continue with our studies. Today we are looking at the purified partakers with glorified Christ. Purified partakers with the glorified Christ. We read our text from 1 Peter chapter 4, 14 through to 18. The purified partakers with the glorified Christ. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Now, the point we are starting with is the peaceful partakers of Christ's suffering. Peaceful partakers of Christ's suffering. In verse 13, we are told, but rejoice in as much as Ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, when you become a child of God, when you are born again, when you receive Christ and your life is transformed, you have to rejoice because heaven is in our hearts. We rejoice because heaven is in our hearts. You have to glory because the glory of God awaits you as a child of God. And Christ looks on us as people who are partaking of his own suffering. When Christ came into this world, he went through a lot of sufferings. The world was in darkness. The world was going to the opposite side of holiness and righteousness and salvation and everything. So people saw him as somebody who had come to spoil the game. Oh, what he's saying, we don't understand. What is he talking about? Uh, Nicodemus, for instance, say, you say I should be born again. Should I enter into my mother's womb and be born again? So from A to Z, nobody really understood what Christ was about. But God knew that this world needed a change. So anybody who is changed by the Spirit of God, by the power of God, you go to the side of Christ. So all the sufferings Christ went through is mandatory. Whether you like it or not, you also go through those sufferings. But we want to encourage you that don't be discouraged when people are persecuting you. They are bringing a lot of sufferings upon you. Because number one, as I said, you have to rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. People seek to their name, I mean seek for their names to be written in the church's register. A lot of people don't bother whether their names are in the book of life, which is more important. Your name can be in the church register. If you are not born again, if your life is not saved, sanctified, and you are just focusing on Christ, your name cannot be in the book of life. And the Christ's glory is going to be revealed, and you are going to be revealed with him. No matter what we are passing through today as Christians, we must remember that people in the world, our own colleagues, people in the world, our neighbors, people in our families who are not born again, members of our families, and then people who are our classmates and college mates and whatever you can talk about, they are not born again. They are also going through the same problems. They are going through similar problems. And if those people are able to stand without any heaven for them, no hope of glory for them, no peace, eternal rest for them, if they are going through their own troubles, at the end of the day, if they are not born again, they are going through a very serious trouble in the end. And if they are moving on, why should you as a child of God, because of the troubles you are going through in your Christianity, you want to say that uh, I can't continue again. No, get up, continue till you get to the end. No matter what will come in your way, we must know that in our own case, we will inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 
you are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven as well as many rewards for suffering believers, suffering for righteousness sake. There is a reward you are going to receive and with Christ and we will be glorified together with him. Even at such a time of suffering, the peace of God, which passed all understanding, the Bible says, will reign in your heart. That is why Paul and Silas were able to sing praises to God when they were imprisoned, their legs were chained, they were beaten, and blood was oozing out of their bodies. Because of their eternal glory, because of what was waiting for them, they were able to endure, and they forgot about the suffering, and they were singing praises to God. No wonder the heavens took notice of it and shook the prison and the doors and the earth around and everybody chains was broken and the people came out. Even Jesus Christ, we are told, but because of the glory that is ahead of him, he resisted unto blood, shedding blood on the cross of Calvary. He stood in righteousness and holiness because he knew at the end of the day, he's going to be a winner. Hallelujah. Amen. And the devil will be a loser. Amen. As a believer, you should know the devil is a loser. You are a winner. Amen. So we must follow the example of Christ so that the God of peace abide with us. No matter where we find ourselves, we may be a servant working under maybe a boss who is mistreating or maltreating you because of your stand for Christ, in your place of work, because of your stand for holiness, the people will be holding meetings on how to get rid of you as they plan for Daniel. All the people who will live godly in this sinful world will suffer persecution. That is what the Bible tells us. So it's not a strange thing for you to suffer because of your stand for righteousness. If this is so, what do we meditate on? Do we meditate on the insults and the mockeries the people are heaping upon us? No, 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 no. The Bible has a very good thing for us to meditate upon. In Philippians chapter 4, 7 to 9, we are told, And the peace of God, which passed all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, the things you need to meditate upon, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. The people who are persecuting you, they feel that they are right. They feel they are doing the right thing. But when you bring all the activities, evil activities against you, and you put it in heaven's court, all of them will be guilty. So you don't need to meditate of people or upon the actions of people who are guilty. Meditate upon good things. Whatever they are doing to you, is the opposite of what God sees you and thinks about you. So you shouldn't waste your time on them because I want you to understand that the early church, the people who went ahead of us, if the early church, the believers at that time, they have proper understanding that the decision we are taking for Christ today, maybe through Peter's preaching, through Paul's preaching, through house to house or whatever, the decision we are taking today is going to make us unpopular. We are going to take an unpopular course. And that could cost us not only our properties, but our lives. So when all those things started happening, Right shortly after Pentecost, there arose a serious persecution against these believers. Some were jailed. In fact, the Apostle Paul, when he was giving his defense before the Jewish council in Acts chapter 22, he said it himself because at that time he was on the opposite side. He didn't understand the way, a Christian. He didn't understand anything. He said, I persecuted this way unto the dead. 
Binding, the de- uh, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Even if you are pregnant, he's not looking at that direction. He will pull you and put you into prison. What will happen to the pregnant? I'm looking for the date and you are talking of what will happen to it. It was not his business at all. So few of them were slain outright, including Stephen. You know the story in the Bible. And hundreds were scattered abroad. They that scat- were scattered abroad went everywhere, not weeping, not sorrowing. They were doing what? Preaching the word. And today, believers, we are not scattered. We are not being beaten. We are not being persecuted to that point. You don't preach. Sit down there, whether you are a believer or not. They could have escaped all this by simply denying their faith in Christ and go back into the world. But if they do that, it will be a calamity. So they steadfastly refused to do that. Why? Because if they deny Christ, they will surely perish throughout eternity. But if they turn to Christ, the same enemies that crucified Christ will try to crucify them. But in the end, they will be glorified with Christ. Hallelujah. So that's why we're encouraging you. I don't know the problems you are going through, but we know the God who is able to solve all our problems. Don't give in to the people who are persecuting you. Leave the persecutors alone and concentrate on the good things that will add value to your Christian life. That's what we want to tell you. And by the grace of God, the Lord will be with you. Amen. Number two, the purified partakers of Christ's sanctification. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On them, the Bible says, on their part, he is evil spoken of. Christ Jesus, a man who is holy through and through. They are speaking evil against him. A man who came to give his whole life for we sinful people. They are talking against him. But on your part, he is glorified. Hallelujah. If people call you names, cast aspersions on you for the sake of Christ. If your family in the village or city look down on you, accusing you of bringing shame to the family, because you are carrying the Bible. You see, some people feel so big in their religion. And they feel on top of every other religion because of what they believe. So when you are in that family and you take decision for Christ, they say, he's putting us to shame. They don't know that Christ comes into our life to take away our shame, and give us glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Paul. He said he was a chief of sinners. Even though in his own religion, the people were exalting him. But when he became a Christian, he has died and gone more than 2,000 years ago. His, still, his name is still ringing in the nations and in the pulpit of all preachers. All those people who say they didn't believe in Christ, where are they? We can't even trace them any record concerning them. So the people who are doing that, you need to pity them and pray and say, God, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. If they reproach you, if they slander and give you demeaning looks for his sake, for the sake of Christ, happy are ye, unbelievers speak evil of Christ, whom you as a Christian, you glorify. You exalt, you lift him up for others to be drawn unto him. When everything about you is sanctified, you are saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Your life is purified. You are qualified to be a partaker in the nature of Christ. Yes. You become a partaker of his holiness after your first experience salvation. Then you are able to follow peace with all men. No fighting, no argument, no quarrel. Everywhere you are, there is peace around you. Hallelujah. Amen. When you see people fomenting trouble, you begin to make peace. Talk peace to them. The Bible says, blessed are the peace makers. And that's your business. You are saved and you are peaceful. You are sanctified and you are pure. 
you are baptized in the Holy Ghost as you receive power from on high. Power from on high. Number, the next point is powerful partakers of Christ's spirit. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14 again. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ. Not because you are reproached because you have stolen, you have defiled somebody, you have dealt fraudulently with somebody. No. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Christ will be glorified in our lives. Amen. As salvation, you have grace from God. That's why the Bible says, by grace are ye saved through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of self that any man should boast. Now, at salvation, you have peace with God. At sanctification, you have greater grace and your heart is purified. Your heart is purified. A baptism of the Holy Ghost, the grace increases and becomes higher. And it keeps coming and you are able to overcome every difficulty and every persecution. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power of the Spirit helps, I mean, help the Apostle Paul to overcome all what he went through. And that same power will help us if we focus our attention on Christ, our faith in him, and we look at the word of God, meditating upon the word and praying the word of God inside. We will never fail and we will never fall in Jesus' name. Amen. The power of the Spirit will come upon you. You will, you will live your life in the power of peace, in the power of purity, and the power of the Holy Ghost. Persecution will not tamper with any of your experiences. God will deliver us as he delivered the apostles in Jesus' name. Amen. Many a times I sit down to wonder what really energized and empowered these people to go through all what they were going through. At the time of Nero, a believer suffered seriously. For he himself will set fire inside the city and he says the believers who are standard. At that time, part of their football or the game they were really uh, enjoying was that they would grab a believer and then they would tie him and put him on top of fire like you have gone to the bush to get a, an antelope and you want to roast it. Then as the believer is struggling on the fire, then they are happy. Bees will be on top of a tree. They will tie the believer to the tree. Then they will use stick to push the bees and they are beating the believer. They are happy. They will tie a believer to a running vehicle and it's just rolling on the ground. The vehicle is going at a very tall speed. They will use knife to pierced through the truth of a believer. But do you know what happened? When all these things were going on, the believers were not perturbed at all. They were still affirming and confirming their faith in Christ to the dismay and amazement of the unbelievers around. So some of them look at the boldness of the believers and how they were dying for Christ. They also declare their son and say, I'm also a believer. If there's nothing inside this thing, these people will not do what they are doing. Today, if people are grabbed and they say, deny Christ, <laughs> I watched something, this Boko Haram people something, and they grabbed two believers and they said, we want to finish you, but if you deny Christ, so they asked why he was shaking like this, I deny, I deny, I deny, I deny. <laughs> Then they grab the second one. I say, no, I cannot deny my Lord. He say, well, you are going to die. We give you some few minutes. If you don't do it, you are going to die. And when they were about to shoot, there was a lightning. And the people wanted to shoot. First of all, they shot several times. They didn't die. Then lightning came. And at the end of the day, they said, we believe you're Jesus. 
God is still at work. I don't know the trouble you are going through. I don't know the persecution you are going through, but I know the God who helped those who were persecuted in the past. He is still around to help us. Wherever you are, I want us to pray and you tell the Lord whatever you are going through. You ask for grace, strength, and power so that by the grace of God, this journey we have started, you are not going to stop till we get to heaven. Praise the Lord. There's a song by some churches that say, even if we meet lions, we will not stop. We are moving on till we get to the golden city. Praise the Lord. Our Father, we are grateful unto you for your word that you have given unto us. We pray that this word will stick deep into our hearts, our mind, soul, spirit, and body in Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying that whatever persecution your people are going through, Lord, the grace to be able to stand will be given to every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are almost fainting, I pray that this word will strengthen them. So that none of us who look back will continue till we reach heaven in Jesus' name. Whatever persecution has brought to us, I pray that if it is negative, turn it into positive. But the Bible says we know that all things work together for good for them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. I pray that all the negative things will turn to positives in Jesus' name. Let your name be honored and glorified in our Christian life as you were glorified and honored in the lives of the early believers. Thank you for answering, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.